Hi and welcome to the Scripture Spoken. My name is Theodosia and as you guys know we are digging into the book of Daniel and today I am going to be reading Daniel 4 and then I'm going to share what the Lord has revealed to me as I restudy this um, book and um, this chapter. I pray that you guys have been enjoying um, the scripture life and that you have been digging in. You know, we are going to be with you guys Monday through Friday. And now that we're doing also the scripture spoken, so you're going to see us twice, maybe even three times a week. Um, it's always a blessing to get into God's word and to share God's word with you guys. So grab your Bible, turn to Daniel, the book of Daniel chapter four, grab a journal um, so that you can be able to um, take some notes. If you're new to the Scripture Life channel, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. It is not by mistake that you came across the Scripture Life channel. What we do here is get into God's Word, and we encourage you to get into God's Word. The whole purpose is to encourage believers, non-believer, because the way that you will find out the truth is by open in the book. The book of life is a book of instruction and is a book of healing, deliverance, and is a book that sets us free. So before I get into reading, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day that you have made, for this is the day that you made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you, Father God, for this scripture spoken. I thank you that we can get into your word and we can read it out loud. Thank you for the freedom to read out your, your word out loud. And thank you for the freedom to be able to spread it on the airways, Father. I pray that all those who are or joining us, or joining me in this day, that is not by mistake, that is by a divine appointment, Holy Spirit, minister to them, hide me, and you speak through me, and may their ears be open to hear what you say, and may their hearts be open to receive what you have to say, it is not I, but it is you who is in me, that I will that I come forth and open my mouth. I thank you for the reading of Daniel, and I thank you for all that Daniel has revealed to us, and we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to, again, chapter 4. Um, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, to all people, nation, and language that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I thought... I thought it good to declare the signs and wonders that the Most High God has worked for me. How great are his signs and how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my home, in my house, and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts on my and the thoughts on my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Then the musicians, um, the ma magicians and astrologers, the can the Candians and the the salt, the salt seer, sayers came in, and I told them the, the dream, but they did not make known to me its interpretation. But at last, Daniel came before me. His name is Bassazar, according to the name of my God. In him is the spirit of the holy God. And I told the dream before him, saying, uh, Bethazar, chief of magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy God is in you and no secret, no secret troubles you, explain to me the vision of my dream that I have seen in its interpretation. These were the visions of my head while, while on my bed. 
I was looking, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and its height was great. The tree grew and, be and became strong. Its height reached to the heavens, and it could be seen to the ends of the earth. Its leaves were lovely, its fruit abundant, and in it was food for all. The beasts of the field formed shade under it. The birds of the heavens dwelt in its branches, and all flesh was fed from it. I saw in the vision of, of my head while on my bed, and there was a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven. He cried aloud and said this, Chop down the tree and cut off its branches. Strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beast get out from under it, and the birds from its branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump and roots in the earth, bound, bound with a bound with a band of iron and bronze, in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let him glaze with the beast on the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from that of a man. Let him be given the heart of a beast and let seven times pass over him. This decision is by the decree of the watchers and the sentence by the word of the holy ones in order that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men gives it to whomever he will and sets over it the lowest of men this dream i king Negre, Negre, sorry nebuchadnezzar have seen now you bassazer declare its interpretation since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation but you are able, for the spirit of the holy God is in you. Verse 19. Then Daniel, whose name was Bassazer, was astonished for a time, and his thoughts troubled him. So the king spoke and said, Bassazer, do not let the dream or its interpretation trouble you. Bethazazar answered and said, My Lord, may the dream concern those who hate you, and its interpretation concern your enemies. The tree that you saw, which grew and became strong, whose height reached to the heavens, and which could be seen by all the earth, whose leaves were lovely and its fruit abundant and which was food for all under which the beasts of the field dealt and in whose branches the birds of the heavens had their home. It is you, O king, who have grown and became strong, for your greatness has grown and riches reaches to the heavens and your dominion to the end of the earth. And in, in as much as the king saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stump and roots in the earth, bound with a band and iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him glaze with the beast of the field till seven times pass over him this is the interpretation o king and this is the decree of the most high which has come upon my lord the king they shall drive you from men your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field and they shall make you eat grass like ox they shall wet you with the dew of heaven and seven times shall pass over you, till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it 
to whomever he chooses. And inasmuch as they give the command to leave the stump and roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be assured to you after you come to know that heaven's rule, heaven rules. Verse 27, therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Back off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps, perhaps there may be a lengthen, a lengthen of your prosperity. Verse 28. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar at the end of the 12 months he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke, saying, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power for the honor of my majesty? 31. While the, world, the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has depart from you. And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make you eat grass like ox, and seven times shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whoever he chooses. That very hour the word, the word was fulfilled concerning Neb Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and ate grass like ox. His body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair and, and ground like and ground like eagles, feathers and his nails like birds crawls. Verse 34, in the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, Left my eyes, lift my eyes to heaven, and my understanding returned to me. And I bless the Most High and praise and honor him who lives forever. For his dominion is everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. All these inhabitants of the earth are, re uh, are reported. As nothing he does according to his will in the army of heaven and, and among the inhabitants of the earth no one can restrain his hand or say to him what have you done verse 36 and at at the same time my reason returned to me and for the glory of my kingdom my honor and, and splendor returned to me my counselors and nobles restored to me. I was restored to my kingdom, and excellent majestic was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and honor the king of heaven, all of whose works are truth, and his ways just, and those who walk in pride he is able to put down. Amen. That was powerful very powerful even just like rereading it right now to you guys like you know with you guys brought even some more like truth and revelation you know that I that I can pardon on but um so let me share what the Lord revealed to me as I study this chapter so of course Chapter 4, verse 1 to 3, King Nebuchadnezzar begins to praise the Lord, you know, for his goodness, his wonderful signs of wonder, he had, and what he had done in his life, declaring God's kingdom is an everlasting, which verse 3, Nebuchadnezzar showed a humbleness that many don't show. So in that, you know, and at the beginning, it started off, you know, with him praising God, you know, and then, then he, he did, which was, this was Nebuchadnezzar's second, 
second dream because you know his first dream um was in chapter in the chapter before and um and the meaning of it and if you did not um listen to it please go back and, and listen to it but in that you know he starts off praising and wish the lord has shown me in in the beginning when God has delivered us from something, we start off praising him. We start off giving him the glory. And then as time goes back and when we're back into, you know, into our daily lives and daily doing things for somehow we forget what God has brought us from and what he had did for us and the praises that he has done. And then we, and then here he goes on, you know, and he has a dream verse four you know, through 18, I'm just going to talk about it a little bit. You know, the king had a dream and it troubled him. You know, the king had very power. He was, he, he had power, prosperity, even some, he, he even had some kind of peace within himself. Um, but there was no God until he, he was able, you know, until he was interrupted by a scary dream got he everything was going good for him you know he went back to living the life he was everything was fine and dandy he was living in his kingdom his palace was good everything was good you know his service was good everything was just rolling good right and then boom god interrupted him and gave him a dream god gave nebuchadnezzar a dream that shaped his life and his world that he knew um god God is well able to shake things up with um with Christians as well as non-Christians. And Matthew 5 45 says that you may be sons of your father in heaven, for he makes his sons rises on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. So God is 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 able and capable to bring rain, shake up your foundation on the saved as well as the unsaved you know when you walking in this world thinking that you're the one that's doing it you're the one that's acquiring it you know the creator of the universe can shake things up and um so then verse let me verse six through nine you know the country the countries to re to recount his dream. So he continues to recount his dreams, right? He continues to tell us his dreams. Then he gathers all his wise men before him, um, but none of them could interpret his dreams. So, you know, we can be surrounded by people who are, are wise. For from man's knowledge and from man's own understanding, own sight, we can interpret spiritual um godly things without the father giving this to us you know from our thoughts right we can try to interpret these things and that's what you know um he did he he brought up all his wise here it says in verse seven um he he go ahead and he he sent all these then the magicians the astrologers the canyons and the, the soothsayers came in and I told them the dream, but they did not make known to me its interpretation. You know, they couldn't interpret what was holy. They couldn't interpret what was supernatural, you know. And um, Proverbs 9, 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding your fine mind cannot interpret the things of God that is holy you know Proverbs 2 6 says for the Lord gives wisdom out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding only God is able to give those who have seeked him those who are serving him those who are following him wisdom and knowledge and understanding to interpret the things that he reveals that he shows that he has to happen excuse me and then so in let's daniel 2 20 it says he said blessed be the name of god for even 
and forever and ever for wisdom and might are his. So wisdom comes from God. The use of musicians, um, formulas, and, you know, thoughts of like making up spells is nothing compared to God's knowledge and wisdom and understanding. It is a supernatural thing and it can only be interpreted by those who walk in the spirit of supernatural through the Holy Spirit and through God, right? So Daniel, um, the, the king recognized that Daniel, because he remember from the first dream, you know, who was brought to him to interpret his first dream. And it was Daniel. So it was laid before him. He, he had um, everything that he needed. You know, when he received that dream, he he already knew who he could have went to. But as normal people do, you know, like we have everything that we need in the things of God. But what most people end up doing, they end up going back. They end up going back to their old ways, back to that nasty vomit, you know, that they used to partake in. And so here we go. King Nebuchadnezzar went back to sorcery, went back to musicians, back to seers, you know, back to those things when he had somebody in his kingdom and that he knew could interpret, interpret his dream. He recognized, he finally, thank you, it came back to him, recognized that Daniel's knowledge and ability were supernatural gifts that had nothing to do with what he read or learned or in his tradition, customs, or anything else. See, God wants us to not seek other spirits. And if we um, turn to... So, um, Nebuchadnezzar was very stubborn and and he was very prosperous and he went back. So if you look at as I was saying Leviticus Leviticus 19:31 it says give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. So King Nebuchadnezzar had already, you know, had encountered and experienced the Most High God because even back in, you know, the other, you know, chapter three, and even at the beginning of chapter four, he, you know, he talked about the goodness of God and all that God has had done in his, you know, in his life and interpreting his dreams, his first dream. But instead, he went back to his old ways. And God has shown me, is that not what a lot of believers do even now? You know, we've are, we tasted the goodness of God. We tasted, you know, what the Lord has done. We have experienced it. We have experienced a miracle, supernaturalness, you know. But, ye, but yet we want to go back to those old ways, you know. And that's because we allow allow a door to be open and the enemy came in. And that's definitely what happened here with King Nebuchadnezzar. And let me share another scripture. Deuteronomy 18 verse 9 to 13 says, when you come into the land, which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not learn to follow the abomination of these nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughters pass through fire, which is human sacrifice, or one who practices witchcraft, or is is soothes, soothes slayers, or one who interprets omens, omens, or or a scholar, a scholar, eleven, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abomination, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. Verse 13 says, you shall be blameless before the Lord your God. 
and let me just go ahead and read 14. For these nations which you will dispose, listen to um, soothe slayers and div 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 divinants. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. So, it, you know, God doesn't want us to be seeking outside demonic, because that's exactly what it is, resources, you know, for help. We have to be seeking him because he says to seek his kingdom first, right? So we have to be seeking him. So again, ne King ne he, the king knew from experience, he had somebody in his kingdom that could help him interpret his dream. He wasted his time and went back to his old ways. That's what the Lord has shown me. And we have to be careful, even as believers, to not go back to our old ways, to not turn back from the things of the Lord and to seek the old just because it's there and you know and sometimes you know the enemy will magnify it you know by using other people don't go back to your old ways all right so the lord will reveal his secrets to his servants let's look at amos 3 7 amos 3 7 Okay, um, seven, surely the Lord God does, does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets, servants, the prophets. So unless God reveals his secret, you shouldn't be seeking anything else. You know, you should be seeking him. After trying all he knew and they let him down, King Nebuchadnezzar finally called um, called David. I mean, I'm sorry, called Daniel. Which verse 10, 18, um, 4, 10, it says, these were in the vision, okay, in his head. And so then he starts explaining the visions to Daniel and, um, and start explaining what happened. It's just that how many, you know, many are trying everything first, then seek God after when, you know, when knowing to seek him, as I said. And and I also share, which is Matthew 6, 33, where it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be given to you. So again, we are to seek. Don't think that you are too high or you have arrived and that you cannot be brought down, you know? Philippians 3.13 says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider, and this was Paul, consider that I have made it my own. Yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. So the king had forgotten, you know, what was ahead of him, and he ended up going behind instead of forgetting what was behind and going forward he did the opposite and then and lower showing that's what a lot of people do you know they 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 want to they have arrived to a certain status in life or to a certain point in their life and they think that they have done it themselves and then they they end up slipping and going in a different direction first corinthians 10 12 therefore let the one who thinks he stands firm, immune to temptation, bring over being overconfident and self-righteous. Take care that he does not fall into sin and condemnation. Daniel interprets the second dream. Um, Daniel told the king that the tree represent him and his world, um, his worldwide kingdom. Um, empire that King Nebuchadnezzar will lose his throne and he will become insane for seven years, living like an animal in the field. So he went from being high into being thrown down. Daniel 4, 427, Daniel called the king to repentance so that he, 
that God's judgment might not, you know, come forth. Like for seven years, seven years, the king was, you know, um, what's this? Let's go, 27, right? Daniel says, therefore, our king, let my advice be accept acceptable to you. Break off your sin by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lightening of your prosperity. You know, so the king rejected Daniel's advice. And so then the reading that, the Lord, like, show me how many times have we done the same or have somebody done the same to us that you know our brothers and sisters like we either have rejected somebody has pulled us to the side and say hey sister or hey brother like you know i know that you're heading in this i see that you're heading in this direction this is not the way that you ought to go you know this is what god's word says repent you know and so they turn away from what you was doing so god can have mercy on you or what or how many times have we have pulled a brother or a sister to the side, you know, and, and, and said the same thing to them, you know, because that's what we are called to do. Daniel did that to the king, you know, but he rejected it. And even so, you know, even all this came upon the king at the end of the twelve months he was he was so he was walking about so for a whole year right for a whole year he the king had an opportunity to repent whoa like imagine that for a whole year nothing happened he had this dream daniel interpret the dream daniel requested his advice hey king repent and in those that whole 12 months the king chose not to repent so everything comes down to a choice for a believer and for an unbeliever you have a choice Luke 17, 3 says, take heed for your for yourself. If you if if you brother sin against you, re, uh, rebuke him. If your brother sin against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. Right? Acts 3 19. Repent therefore and be um covered covenant that your sins may be blocked out, so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the lord more matthew 18 verse 15 to 17 right let's turn to it you know like <clears throat> there's so many opportunities for repentance but it comes down to a choice matthew 18 so verse um 15 Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. 17. And if he refuses to hear them, Tell it to the church, but if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Did I stop? 17. So, brothers and sisters, a lot of people, is, like when you try to talk to them and you try to give them advice as Daniel did to the king and let them know, hey, look, you heading down the wrong direction, my sister. You heading down the wrong direction, my brother. Like then what they want to say, hey, don't judge me. Don't judge me. But here in Matthew, it gives instruction to pull your brother to the side, pull your sister to the side, you know, let them know, hey, my my brother and my sister, you know, the sin that you're doing, it's not good. You know, this is not what God's saying. And then they don't believe, bring another witness with you. They don't accept, take it to the church. You know, they don't accept the church. They're heathens. Let them go. Let them 
go on into their sin. So, so it's not a matter of fact of I'm trying to judge you or we're trying to judge you. It's a matter of fact of trying to help you to, you know, cause you to not have this destruction. And because the king did not heed to Daniel's advice, what he had in the dream, it came to pass. Daniel, um, God give him, so that, that God give the king time to repent. The king didn't re repent after 12 months of, of, um, on repentance on the king's side, the vision came to pass for seven years. He lived like a beast. Oh, wow. Like literally walking around in verse 31 here. It says, while the, no, let's go back up. All 28, all this came up upon King Nebuchadnezzar at the end of the 12 months. He was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. And here's the pride. The king spoke saying, is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? And then boom, as he spoke those words. You know, a voice came to heaven and his dream came to pass. Be careful, my brothers and my sister, to think that you cannot be put down. To be put, you know, you put yourself on a pedestal and you want to be like other people on a pedestal, you know, be very careful, you know, and um, because you will, you could be put down as Nebuchadnezzar was put down. So he turned to God and so he, at the, he became a beast, right? Um, and everything in the dream, he lost his kingdom. He lost his, um, he lost his, of being a man, he became a beast eating grass, like literally living in the wilderness until at the end, he turned to God and acknowledged that he is the most high who lives forever. He was re Then he was restored to the glory of his kingdom. Repentance is so important. So important. Um, so he lived up when he finally lifted up his eyes to heaven and he understood. And this is verse 34. And he understood. And return his understanding returned to him, and he glorified and blessed the Lord. And then the Lord was able to restore him all that he had lost. And I'm even even now Jesus has not returned yet because God's desire is for for none to perish. So even now to this day Jesus has not returned. And let's go to Second Peter three. Right, all that is happening in the world, in the body of 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 Christ, you know, of believers, L repentance. Let's repent from from the things that we're doing, from pride, from sinfulness. Repent is a time of repentance. It, these, as we see in these past two years, how you know, last year everything shut down. You know, in the agenda of what is happening, you know, and what the government is doing and what people are doing, even among other believers, believers coming against each other, like Jesus hasn't returned because he desires for none to perish and he's waiting for us to repent. Second Peter three, verse nine says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness but as long suffering towards us not willing that any should perish perish but that all should come to repentance it is time to come to repentance it is time to look up to heaven and ask god for forgiveness and to turn turn away from our evilness turn away from pride even you know pride can sl slide in you know, and you not even know how prideful you are to so think that you're so high and mighty, you know, above other people. 
it's time, you know, to turn back. First Timothy 4 verse, I'm sorry, First Timothy 2 verse 4 says, Who desires all men to be saved and to come to knowledge of truth? It is Christ who does that. It is Christ that desires. You know, because in verse 5, it says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man the man Christ Jesus verse 6 says who gave himself as a ransom for us for all to be testified in due time so Christ has paid it off for us you know and and we are to be consistently in a spirit of repentance all right let's talk let's turn to Ezekiel 33:11 I'm give another, you know, go to the Old Testament. 33 verse 11 says, Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for, for why should you die, O house of Israel? So God doesn't want nobody to perish. He doesn't even want the wicked to perish. Excuse me. He wants, you know, us, the wicked, to turn away from their wicked ways and turn to him. And he gives us eternal life and forgiveness. You know, so last I'm in, you know, there's so much in this chapter. Um, but I'm going to leave with this. Don't be too content in where you are or have and forget about who brought you there who give who give it to you and who give you the ability to be where you are at where you are at and have humble yourself always have a spirit of humbleness humble yourself you know don't think that you are all high and mighty, <laughs> that you have arrived. Because even Paul says, I cannot, you know, say that I have arrived, you know. Be very careful to think that you are, you have arrived. And I, I'm going to share the last verse with you, Proverbs 16, verse 18 to 19. It says, pride goes before destruction and a hotler spirit before a fall. It's better to be humble in spirit with the Lord than to divide um, to divide the spoil with the proud. So too many pride, too, too much pride would destroy you. And I pray that you got some great understanding from this. And until we meet again on the scripture spoken, you have a blessed day.